Hey, what's going on guys? This is Kevin from the It Resolves podcast and today we actually have a full box opening for the first time on our channel and it is with the new set of Ixalan. Uh, if you haven't been keeping up with everything, the set just released. Uh, we had a pre-release last weekend and this is the first time we're actually getting to see it firsthand. Um, really like a lot of this set and then really dislike a lot of it too to be honest. Uh, the artwork in this set is fantastic. I think it looks really really good. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting cards in this set as well. Things like New Cradle-ish. Uh, Jace which is pretty interesting I think and then uh, a few other interesting cards and then obviously things like in the common slot like Optin Spell Pierce are always exciting so we will see what we get. Uh, we'll start over here. Um, we've never done a box opening on this channel before, so this is a whole new thing for us. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoy it, and we'll quickly go through the comments. As normally there's not too much there. Uh, Dinosaur Stampede, Slice and Twain, Imperial Aerosaur. And starting off with a Mythic, Dire Fleet Ravager. Uh, three and two black menace death touch four four when it enters the battlefield each player loses a third of his or her life rounded up uh, super powerful card and of course okay let's see so just out of curiosity um, I'd like to know what your favorite card from this set is uh, if you do have a favorite from this just comment down below um, I'm sort of on the Cradle Train. I really like that card. Um, I don't think it's as playable as Cradle, obviously, but uh, the Dusk Apostle is a great card. Uh, this is sort of speculatory, but I do think that this card could actually get quite good. Um, obviously, in Limited, it's great already. New Treasure Tokens. All right, I love the art in this set. I mean, the vivid colors in this set just look absolutely beautiful. Uh, the lands are great as well. Uh, let's see, Sky Terror is a great card. A foil chalice, cool, cool, and Bloodfast. So this is one of these sort of flip enchantment lands. Uh, this one, basically, once it flips, you can tap it and sack a creature, and you gain life equal to that sac sacrifice creature's toughness. This is sort of a cycle of cards, obviously. Um, the Cradle being in there is one of those. Uh, there's a few others, and I don't remember the names of them offhand. Um, but they're all quite interesting, and obviously they're really powerful effects on the flip side, but it takes a lot to flip them. Uh, so this sort of being another example, actually. Dowsing Dagger. Um, basically, you equip it to a creature, and when it deals damage to a player, you get to transform it. And then on the land side, uh, you can tap it and add three color, three mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, so repeated Black Lotus, theoretically. And that's sort of the, the theme here is, you know, these cards are super powerful on the on the flip side, but is it is it really worth it to have to flip it and do all that? Um, I think there's some some split there. Hey, look at that. So, new Jace. Uh, if you don't know, this card is really interesting um, due to doubling season, actually. So, uh, if you play doubling season and then you play Jace, you can infinite alt Jace uh, for more and more Jaces and then create, theoretically, infinite two twos or do something like that. So, it's a really powerful card. Uh, and at three mana, obviously three mana Planeswalkers generally are pretty good. Uh, I say that knowing that there are a few that are not as good as the others, but uh, Ashiok comes to mind as sort of the classic example. And that card, oh, that card is insane. So, commons. There's a new Spell Pierce. I love the art on that Spell Pierce. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uncommons, walk the blank. Fleet Swallower, this is an interesting one. Um, basically a mill bomb. So far not a bad box. Uh, what are we hoping for? The other Planeswalker would be kind of nice. Uh, new Duress, by the way, also looks great. Ah, Ripjaw Raptor. So this card's really cool. Uh, it 
uh, is one of the classic enrage cards. Enrage, excuse me. Uh, and basically, this is a new mechanic in this set that whenever this creature is dealt damage, you get an effect. And in this case, you get to draw a card. So right off the bat, a four mana four five is great. But with that ability, you get to hopefully get some card advantage off of it and things like that, which just make it insane. Um, especially in a limited environment, and there's a lot of cards that interact with that that. You know, you can deal damage to your own creatures or something like that, and then gain maybe a little bit of extra value off of those cards as well. And so it just sort of stacks. Hey, the Honor Guard. So this we talked about in one of our episodes, and this is one of the cards that I was actually most looking forward to, just because it's a classic hate bear effect. Um, basically, creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. So uh, shuts down things like Snapcaster Mage and things like that, which are obviously problematic cards uh, if you're playing against them but it shuts them down very quickly and very efficiently, which I think is fantastic. Uh, let's see. Waker of the Wilds. So this is also an interesting card. Uh, I, I feel like I keep saying that, but uh, first of all, the art's beautiful. It's a uh, four mana three, three, which isn't great, uh, but its ability is pretty interesting that you can put one, one counters on lands you control and they also gain haste. Um, and this was actually labeled, I think, by Strictly Better MTG, if I'm not mistaken, as one of the sleepers in the set. Uh, because you can actually use that ability right off the bat. You don't have to tap the creature, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, it's pretty good, I think. The captain. Eh, not super excited. Um, let's see, what else do we get? Another new spell pierce. No ops yet that I've seen at least. Uh, lightning strike. New lightning strike art looks great. Ashes of the Aberrant. This is sort of a rest in peace effect, but it's actually really, really good. A pounce. Uh, pounce is actually a great limited card. Target creature you control fights a target creature you don't control. Instant speed for two mana. Uh, very similar to things like Prey Upon, which have always been great removal for green. Uh, fighting is a very powerful effect, especially in this set. Uh, Primal Amulet. So this is another one of those lands. Uh, this one seems just too slow to really do too much. Basically, it it benefits off of uh, casting instants and sorceries. So once it has four counters on it, which you get one every time you play an instant or sorcery, uh, you can flip it. And then when you tap this land to pay for an instant or sorcery, you get to copy it. Uh, and choose new targets if you'd like, which is absolutely a powerful effect. There's no doubt about that. But uh, at four mana just to play it, and then you also have to play a lot of other things, seems not great, I guess. Um, maybe there will be a, a deck that can abuse it, but as of as of now, I can't see it. The Butcher. Uh, this is a very great card. Um, I really like this. It's a five mana, four, four. Uh, that basically has Vigilance and Life Link, and you can tap it, pay 7 life, uh, destroy target non-land permanent. That's any non-land permanent, which is hugely powerful, uh, but you can only do it during your turn, which, I mean, is a drawback, but, you know, it's still a really powerful card, especially in a limited environment. Uh, you'll want to take that. Um, that being said, I don't know. It's I want to see it in Constructed. I wonder if we will, but... I think that seven life might be a bit of a steep cost. Uh, let's see. Favorable Winds is an awesome card. Hey, Admiral Beckett Brass. Uh, this is the Pirate Lord. Hey, wow, it's a great pack. Um, the Pirate Lord, other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. It's a 3-3 three, three itself with Grixis colors and one. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who was dealt damage by three or more pirates this turn. Uh, which is obviously hugely powerful effect. You get to steal things, um, but it, it's a pretty steep requirement. So you'll be wanting to be very aggro, uh, which Grixis, I mean, Grixis Death Shadow is aggro, I guess. Uh, and then we also have the foil Bloodfast, uh, which I love the foil lands. I, I doubt you can see this all that well. Let's try and do this. Let's get that up close and then bring it back can see some of that foiling, which just looks beautiful on that card. I love that. All right, let's see. That was an awesome pack. Field of Ruin, 
Uh, very good card, actually. We're seeing that um, take over some of the Ghost Quarter job. Fathom Fleet Captain, pretty good. Um, so Field of Ruin, if you don't know, basically is like uh, four more copies of Ghost Quarter in any sort of landlocked deck, uh, which is awesome. Um, it's not, I would say, maybe not quite as good just because you have to actually pay mana to do it, but uh, it's still very good. All right, well, we have the Poet. Um, this is the other Planeswalker in this set. So this card, I am interested to see how this works. I really like it. Uh, so comes in with three loyalty. It's a five mana Planeswalker, which is a bit much, but not terrible. Uh, it's plus two. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Uh, it's zero. Create a three, three green dinosaur token with trample. Uh, and then minus X, uh, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, and creatures dealt uh, damage this way can't block this turn. So, an interesting Planeswalker, I think, but a very good one. I, I also believe that we'll see some play with that, so hopefully at least. I really do like it. Deep Root Champion. Some of the new Merfolk cards. Um, Merfolk obviously being a huge tribe in this set. Merfolk, pirates, and dinosaurs all being very powerful along with vampires, but um, you spell pierce. Repeating Barrage. This is an interesting card. Um, I never really gave this much thought, but I'd be interested to see how it actually plays out. So for three mana, it's a sorcery. It deals three damage to target creature or player. Sure. Uh, it also has the raid ability for three and two red. Return uh, this card from your graveyard to your hand. Only activate this if you've attacked with a creature this turn. So the reason I'm kind of on the fence on this card is because you can actually uh, just keep recurring it, which seems really good. I mean, it costs a lot of mana to do it, but sometimes in like a red deck win style thing, um, you may not have a whole lot of uses for your mana late game, so maybe that is the, the way to go. Uh, Ruin Raider, also featuring the raid mechanic. No new Cradle yet, but still the card I guess I'm hoping for. Uh, along with a big nasty dinosaur, I can't think of the name, uh, but it is just a massive beating. The Hexproof, uh, I think it's the most expensive card in the set actually right now. Uh, Caravel. Um, it's hugely, hugely strong. Just on raw power level, it's awesome. It can't be countered. It has Hexproof and Trample. I think it's like a 7-6 for either 6 or 7. It's, I mean, it's just insane. Such a great card. Let's see. Ah, okay. So this these uh, lands I actually really like as well. There's a Ranging Raptors. So um, these obviously are reprints. This is Sun Puddle Grove, the green-white uh, reprint here, but basically it, they enter the battlefield tapped unless you already control a forest or a plane, uh, and that sort of works with all of the cycles, and it's a green-white dual land basically, but I really like the new art on these. Um, again, I, I keep sort of harping on the art, but it's just so good in this set, so uh, really, really pretty land cycle. Um, happy to pick up a a couple of those if we can. Let's see. Woo! There we go. A Ripjaw Raptor, but foil this time, which is absolutely great. I think it's like a $10 card. I might be wrong on that. Um, here's another one of these lands. Uh, this is the blue one, which basically gives you, I believe it's a factor fiction on the backside. So you get tap two in a blue. Uh, and tap the land and then look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I'm sorry, that's not factor fiction. Um, but it is super powerful still. So definitely a good uh, land there. But again, you do have to still flip it. There's the new opt. Um, which, I don't know. I'm skeptical on whether or not that'll actually be good. Burning Sun's Avatar. This is another cycle. Uh, this one, when it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent and two up to one creature. Uh, so limited bomb for sure. Probably not going to be constructed playable anywhere, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's hope I'm wrong. 
All right, let's see. What do we get? Imperiors and Emperor's Vanguard. Wow, excuse me. Uh, this is a really good limited card for sure. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it explores. It's 4-3 for 4, uh, which notably in this set, that dies to Lightning Strike, which, I mean, isn't great, but it's still a really powerful card. So it's not bad. Another Field of Ruin. Shaper's Sanctuary. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or, or an ability your opponent controls, uh, you may draw a card. So definitely interesting. Probably not really what you're looking for in like a limited environment, uh, but especially in like Commander or something like that, uh, you could really get some, some major card advantage off of that. Ooh, okay. This is a really uh, flavorful card, we'll say. Star of Extinction for five and two red, it is a sorcery. Destroy target land, and then it deals 20 damage to every creature in each planeswalker. Uh, so a lot of damage. Um, and there's actually sort of a combo with that. Uh, if you have something like a Boros Reckoner, or something like that, obviously not in standard, uh, something like modern, uh, you can actually use that and then redirect all 20 damage to your opponent. Um, which I think is silly. It's definitely not actually competitively viable, but it is awesome. Uh, Kinjali's Sunwing, 2-3 uh, three for three flying creatures your opponents control. Enter the battlefield tapped. Another really, really uh, good limited sort of, not I wouldn't say bomb, but it's such a good swing in your favor when your opponent's creatures come into play tapped. Obviously limited, is really decided on by creatures. So if you can manage something like that, it just slows your opponent down tremendously. Um, so here we have the Green Sun's avatar. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, you gain life equal to, uh, when another creature or this creature comes into the battlefield, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So sort of a life gain card. I generally, it's, life gain is like not the best way to go in magic. Uh, but against aggro strategies, it definitely has its place. Uh, and Soul Sisters, obviously, is pretty good. And here's another one of the dual lands. This is the blue, uh, white dual land, Glacial Fortress. Just, I mean, it's just so nice looking. Um, I love these lands, so I'm actually really happy to see these back. They're not worth a ton, obviously. They're not fetchable or anything like that, but they're just so nice looking. Let's see. Dead Eye Tracker. This is one of the cards that Will was actually talking about. Um, it's a one mana one one, which, you know, okay. Uh, for one and a black and tapping it, you can exile two cards from target opponent's graveyard and then it, it explores. Uh, which I've already mentioned the explore mechanic and didn't actually mention what it does. Uh, basically, you reveal the top card of your library. If it is a land, you put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a one one counter on this creature. And then you can put that card back on top of your deck, or you can put it into the graveyard. Uh, so it's sort of a way to get through your deck a little bit quicker and uh, theoretically boost uh, your guy, which is pretty good. Definitely a strong limited mechanic. Captivating Crew. Not too excited about that. Something good. Let's get something really good this pack. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, it's not super good. It's Legion's Landing. Uh, this is another one of these flip lands. And basically, on the flip side, the the big payoff is that you can tap two and a white and then tap this to create a 1-1 white vampire token with lifelink. So, <laughs> it's not... I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I love these these land flip cards, but they just seem like you have to really invest a lot. Um, which, I mean, in some cases is fine, but ideally not the best. Spell Swindle, this is the new big counter spell. So it's obviously expensive for a counter spell, three and two blue, which is a lot. Uh, but you counter target spell and then create X colorless uh, treasure artifact tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Uh, and those you can sack and add mana to your mana pool of any color. <coughs> so reminiscent of, um, what is it? 
uh, the big counter spell that's being reprinted uh, in Iconic Masters, where you get to basically add mana to your mana pool for that, uh, which is a powerful effect, and maybe this is sort of the fixed version. Uh, Drown Catacomb, one of the best, I think, of this cycle. Uh, and by that, I mean best looking. That's just awesome. Two more packs. What are we hoping for? I guess still the new Cradle. Is there much else? We got both of the Planeswalkers, which is pretty awesome. Um, well, here's a good one. Kapala Warden of Waves. This is also a card that we talked about in uh, the podcast. Basically being a modern playable fish for uh, the Merfolk deck, which is super good. Uh, but it's really only sideboard relevant. That being said, when, in the games where you want it, you really want it because it really does slow people down. It makes it really hard to deal with your creatures, uh, at least efficiently. Um, so really happy to get that. Last pack. Let's see what we get. Uh, all right. Dragon Skull Summit. So didn't get quite all of the, uh, the dual lands here, but we got four out of the five, I believe. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And really, this box wasn't too bad. I mean, we got both of the Planeswalkers, which is great. Uh, Kapala, a few of these dual lands, which is also great. Um, what else? What was the other big stuff? I love these flip cards. Ah, oh, Foil Riftjaw Raptor was pretty good, uh, as well as the Bloodfast. So yeah, I'm happy with this box. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us and watching this little uh, box break that we've done. We hope you enjoy it. If you like these videos, let us know. We'll start to do more of them. Uh, but until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you later.